Hello and welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson and I've been in the reef hobby for 10 years. And guess what? I've killed a lot of fish. Well, the first thing I did wrong to begin with was I didn't quarantine fish when I started and I had disease problems and a lot of fish died from that. And then when I finally learned I needed to quarantine, things got better but it takes so long to quarantine and if you do quarantine wrong you can still kill your fish and that sucks i had a chevron tang and if you haven't priced a chevron tang price one of these guys they're expensive i had a chevron tang that died in qt of marine velvet now i adored this fish i saw it i had to have it it was gorgeous and it died of marine velvet in quarantine the good news was it was in quarantine and didn't kill my entire tank the bad news was that's an expensive fish and anytime I kill a fish I take it personally so since then I've worked really hard to improve my quarantine process and I've gotten my quarantine process down to a really effective 10-day method so here's how I quarantine my fish in 10 days. So step number one, when you go to the store and you buy a fish, you gotta know the fish you're buying. Some fish need a sand bed. A lot of your wrasses are gonna wanna bury into the sand bed. So if you're gonna quarantine one, have a sand bed for that fish if it needs one. Some fish cannot be quarantined in copper medication. It will kill them. So know your fish before you bring it home. Know what it eats, know how to take care of it, know what your quarantine process is gonna be before you ever put the money down for this fish. I know, this sounds simple, but we've all done it. We've all come home with a fish that we were completely incapable of taking care of. So step one, know your fish. Step two, you gotta have a quarantine tank. Now, my quarantine setup is different than most people's and I'll put a link down below to a video that explains a little better on how my system works but I keep my quarantine system running 24 7 it's never down reason being is I run a back filter with biological media a sand bed a heater and a protein scammer this is basically like a 29 gallon fish only system now the reason I do this is because I want that biological cycle. I want to be able to take ammonia and convert it to nitrate. Basically, if you put a fish in to a system that doesn't have biological filtration, as soon as that fish goes in, it's going to start producing ammonia. Ammonia is toxic to your fish. I'm not willing to have ammonia in my quarantine system. Why would I bring a fish home that's already stressed and stress it with ammonia and potentially kill it with ammonia poisoning? I'm not going to do it. Now, a lot of you are going to disagree. I totally understand where you come from. But for me personally, I want a nitrogen cycle going on in my quarantine tank so I don't stress it with ammonia. So step three is going to be putting your fish in the tank right so when we buy our fish the main thing i'm worried about are parasites like ick and marine velvet there's a bunch of other stuff that can be a problem but for me ick and marine velvet have been the biggest so ick and marine velvet are going to come in to your system in two forms they're either going to be swimming freely in the water column or they're going to be on the fish itself so when i acclimate my fish to the quarantine water, I do some, I take one more step before I put the fish in to the quarantine water. I will take some of that quarantine water out, put it in a little bowl, and I will take the fish out of the bag and put the fish in the bowl and let it swim around in that bowl for a few minutes. The idea being is I want to rinse off any parasites that could have been in the water attached to the fish. I'm not trying to get the parasites that are attached to the fish, just the parasites that were in that water. It's not a big deal because we're gonna kill them anyways. But it's one other step to reduce parasites going into your quarantine system. Step four, I am gonna dose copper medication as soon as that fish goes in. I'm gonna put 
a quarter to half a dose of copper in that tank as soon as that fish goes in. If you remember that chevron tang I was talking about, the odds are there was just a couple of little parasites on that fish. And had I dosed copper medication as soon as that fish went in, I would have killed them before they had to, time to reproduce and take my fish out. Now I've done a whole other video on how to dose copper medication and I'll link that to this video. So if you don't really understand how to dose copper medication, watch that. But I dose the copper medication as soon as the fish goes in. Then over the next two to four days, and depending on the fish, I'll either do a quarter dose or I'll do half a dose. I really like to push that copper hard to begin with. So I usually err towards half a dose unless I have a really stressed fish. So I'll go with the half a dose and then the next day I'll put the other half dose in there. Now let's look at the ick cycle because remember we have done everything possible to make sure there are no free swimming ick parasites in the water. They still could be there but we put the copper in. Now copper kills ick in the free swimming cycle. So if there were parasites free swimming they should be killed in this time period. Now, the ick parasites are going to swim for roughly 18 hours at max. Then they can attach to your fish. Now, they don't attach on the skin level or anything where they can be killed by the parasite. They burrow in. At this point, they are immune to the copper medication, right? They're going to be in the, the gills. They're going to be in the body of this fish, the skin of it, right? Completely immune to the copper medication. So they can be in this state feeding off your fish for up to seven days. And it's about the same for it and marine velvet, right? But at this point in time, they are immune. Now, they're going to come out and they're going to go free swimming and they're going to try to make it to the sand bed so that they can perform a cyst and reproduce. Here's where we're going to kill them. Remember, we got copper in this water. So as soon as they come out, we're going to have a good full dose of copper medication. And this is going to kill the parasites. It's going to kill them pretty much 100%. I've done this quite a few times. And I've never had a problem with it not getting everything. Now, this is a life. So I guarantee you that no matter how much copper medication you put in there, that it is possible for one of those fish to make it to that sand bed. But I'm going to say the odds are infinitesimally small that your fish could possibly be infected a second time with the copper medication in the tank. And basically, we're done, right? Because we've killed any free swimming parasites in the tank. The fish that may have brought parasites in is now free of parasites because they've all come out and then they've all died. All those parasites have come out, copper medication kills them immediately. We're done. That's it. Now we're looking at it. So you're at 18 hours, maybe for anything free swimming, seven days max for the stuff on the fish another 18 hours, and let's call each one of these a day, right? Well, we're at nine days. Theoretically, you can quarantine your fish with a 100% kill rate on your parasites in nine days. I like to bump it to 10 just for safety. But that's what I've been doing. It works fantastic. The last three or four tangs, this is how I've done it. Now, some of you are gonna say, well, you already had ick in your tank. I know this, you've seen my videos, it's there. Well, that ick was there before I started this process. That came in on something else. I've always been diligent on quarantining my fish. You can still get ick in your tank through rocks or coral or who knows. But this way will ensure that you kill parasites before they go in your main tank. And the main one I'm worried about is marine velvet.
Marine Velvet is like Ebola. It spreads quickly and has a very high kill rate. And you don't want that in your tank. Ick, we can deal with. Marine Velvet is lethal almost 100% of the time. So, I know this episode is going to be a little controversial. I think it's safe to say that this 10-day quarantine process is infinitely better than no quarantine and almost as good as the three-week to two-month quarantine process. So for me, it works great. I do it, I love it, and that's how I'm going to continue to do it. So this video is out to give you some food for thought. Here is an easier, faster way to quarantine that's really effective. So in the comments below, tell me what you think. Anyways, thanks for watching this episode of Mile High Reefers. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.